It's all right. Does that look like I've got Lego hair? Yeah. yeah. So, it's Valentine's Day, and I thought we would do a little video on relationships. More specifically, our relationship. Tom, would you like to tell them a little bit about yourself? I'm okay, thanks. I'm Tom. <laughs> Hi. He's the boyfriend. And how long have we been going out? Like, blah, 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 blah. How long have we been going out for now? Five years. Five years. It's been all right, isn't it? It's been a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. Do we want to start with how we first met? Yeah, at okay. work. Where did we meet, Tom? At work. Yeah, but where is work? <laughs> oh, m &S. Yeah, so basically there was a new store that was opening up and we both got transferred there and it was it was a brand new store so we had to build up the shelves and the stock and put all the tickets out and stuff like that. So that's how we met and you were asking people where they parked, isn't that right? We were, we were just having a chat yeah. as a group and then you said to me, oh, where did you park today? Because um, I think there was like limited parking spaces or something because it was quite a new area. Okay. And I was like, oh, I got dropped off because uh, at the time <clears throat> I hadn't passed my driving test. That's right. And and you were like, oh, so how are you getting home? And, I, and as for a joke, because I thought I was hilarious, I was like, oh, I'm walking home. And you were like, walking? How far away do you live? And I was like, about a 20 minute drive. And you're like, no, that's, that's mental. That's madness. And then you offered me a lift home. And I was like, oh, I'll drive you home. And I was like, really? And in my mind, I thought that that would actually help mum and dad out because then they wouldn't have to come and pick me up and it would save them on petrol. That's what went through my mind. I was like, ooh, I could I could take this offer Lumbered up. Lumbered with the lift home. So, so I, accept, <laughs> I accepted. And then like for the next two hours after that, I was really scared. Because I hardly knew. Like during the shift, I asked. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And then I had like two hours left of the shift, and I was thinking, oh my god, what if he's a kidnapper? How do you remember this? What was if he's a murderer? Like I was just like freaking out. I was like, what have I done? Don't accept lifts from strangers. Is rule number one. But what? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah. Maybe you worked. Oh, okay. Yeah, we hardly knew each other. I didn't know who you were. Like I knew, I knew you were all right. But at the back of my mind, I was like, but what if he's not? What was if he's like and a What murderer? if I'm still not? And I'm just playing like the really long game. For the next two hours, I was like a little bit freaked out. And then, but it was all right, actually. He drove me home. And I kind of embarrassed myself quite a bit. Because I told him to go right at a roundabout that didn't have a right hand turning. And I told him there was a... I was like, watch out for the speed camera that's going up. <laughs> and it was just a yellow I sign. I so yeah, and then after that, we just sort of like exchanged numbers and then texted quite a bit. And we saw each other at work quite a lot. Um, and then one fine day in December, he texted me one night. He's like, oh, how about we just go out, just the two of us, maybe sometime. Don't give away my moves. The moves. <laughs> I think I was just in a little bit of shock um, because I went from hysterically laughing to just being like <gasps> I actually vlogged it on my old webcam um, and if I can find that clip if I'm brave enough I will insert it now <laughs> uh, shit. I was just hysterically that laughing that someone wanted to go out with me I thought it was funny because I was like, he obviously doesn't know how weird I am. Yeah, so after all of that kind of died down, I was a little bit like, um, I felt really deflated, I guess, because at that point, I hadn't told anyone at work about CF. And obviously, Tom didn't know either. Um, so I felt like really deflated because it was like he doesn't know the real me i had a real sort of battle in my mind for the next couple of weeks before our first date like do i tell him when do i tell him how do i tell him because i'd never i'd never spoken to anyone face to face i'd never told anyone face to face properly blah, face blah, <laughs> i never really told anyone face to face properly before other than uh the interviewer for the mns job they knew and... We'll have to say MS. Yeah, why not? 
Marks and Spencers. Yeah, I was thinking like what if he doesn't want to be with me or can't handle the fact that I've got CF. So I was going through all of these different scenarios in my mind and in the end I had to put my foot down and say, no, Kate, if, if he acts like that, if he acts uh, immaturely about anything, then on your bike, mate, you know, I don't want to know, basically, sod off. Uh, I'm just listening. Listen. You are, <laughs> I'm yet. I'm just babbling on. Um, is that all right? Yeah, it's okay. fine. I'll, I'll come to you in a minute. <laughs> really good cup of tea. Okay, so for our first day, what did we do, Thomas? Cinema. We went to see The Hobbit. Yes, we did. Very well done. Very well remembered. You remembered something. But so I didn't tell him for the first day because I was like, it's just cinema. Second day, though, we planned to... Well, we went for drinks yeah. and sort of had like a little chat to sort of get to know, know each other. And in my brain, I was like, okay, this is the perfect time to sit down across from him and tell him about CF. So when he asked something like, you know, oh, tell me a bit about yourself or whatever, I would go, oh, I was diagnosed with uh, CF when I was two, sort of thing. But when it got to that question, I completely froze up. Like, I just, I couldn't do it. I remember sitting there thinking, no, I can't. I, I literally can't tell him. Nope, nope, nope. So I, I have no idea what I said instead, but I just remember that situation so vividly. <laughs> All people are going to see is just me sitting here while you chat, chat, chat. Gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> well, I'm very aware we're on a time limit. If you can hear build, building, if you can hear like knocking, is we've got builders in next door, so can't do anything about that. Soz. Don't say soz. Don't say soz. Sorry. So yeah, I was really frustrated after our second date because I didn't tell him. So I made sure that when we arranged our third date that it was on the day of my annual review. And I did that um, because it sounds absolutely mental because anyone who's been for an annual review, it's a long bloody day, isn't it? It's, oh yes. Yeah, it's it's a really, really long day. <coughs> I did it because... Um, what? Because. I did it because. 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 I did it because. I did it because. What do you say? Because. Because. You say because. Is it because or because? Because. Because if you don't remember, do say because. <laughs> don't put that in. Okay. I did it because I texted Tom, I think the, the day before I said I mean, like, oh, I've got to be up really early to go to the hospital tomorrow. Yeah, I remember that. And he was like, oh, is everything okay? Uh, and I was like, I'll tell you tomorrow evening. So I set myself up for it because... Did I you realise I didn't really process... I was just like, oh, okay, fine. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, so think, in my mind, this was a huge event. And for him, it was just like... Oh. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I set That's it up for myself so I couldn't back out. That was a, was a really smart move, really, wasn't it? When we got in the car, he was like, is everything okay? And I said to him, um, basically, I have a condition called cystic fibrosis, which mainly affects the lungs and the digestive system. And each year I have an annual review where um, they do a whole checkup and see if everything's okay, basically. And do you remember your reaction? It was just this. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> literally that i was like okay Should we go? yeah i was like i don't know if he knows like what it is of course he didn't like because it's i'd heard of it but i didn't have a clue what it was told him and i said to him don't google it because yeah. google obviously comes up with a lot of not nice things and not necessarily applies to me um but of course you did google it you don't google it not google you googled not Google. <laughs> Make that joke twice. <laughs> the tea is affecting me all around. <laughs> um, so we did Google it. <clears throat> yeah, but obviously I was going to. Yeah. Because I didn't have a clue what it was. So when you say, don't, I've got this, but don't look at what it is. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, obviously I have Well, to. I thought I had to warn you. And, I, and I'm glad I did because you said... You said that you didn't look too much into it because I told you not to Google it. Yeah, I did, because... 
you kind of when, with anything like that you scroll through like the first two or three links which are always going to be the worst case scenario and then you kind of think oh bloody hell okay no well, I won't look at it so then I looked at sort of roughly what it would have been or what it entails and then I closed it and then I thought I'll let her talk to me properly about it because mm. obviously everyone's a bit different and you don't actually know what you're going through or what mm. you're what your condition um, entails. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. After I told you about it, it was, I think it was really difficult for me because I couldn't, I'd never like really been open about CF before to anyone. So. Not even friends and stuff. Well, some of my friends knew, but even with them, like I struggled to do my pills in front of them. Like if we went out for a meal, I would go to the loo to take my really? crayons. Yeah. Like I was that um, self-conscious about it. It was a strange sort of thing because I told you about it, but I hadn't really shown you yeah. like everything because I hid it because that's what I was used to, if that makes sense. And I did for the longest time. Like any time that you would ask me sort of a question about it or see me doing my nebs or my pills or whatever, I would get really embarrassed. And it wasn't until like six months in, um, when we went on holiday for the first time, which was camping, and I had to do my nebulizers, obviously. I just remember saying to myself, I've just got to do it. And I did it, and I think maybe you asked a couple of questions. I probably did, yeah. Yeah, and I just sort of, I kind of blocked everything out and I just told him about it all. And that's how it sort of started to develop, and then you asked me a lot of questions. All I did all right, didn't I? Ask some questions yeah, no, stuff. the thing is, he was like, you, you. Not he. He. You're, you're here. I, I don't. You were really supportive with like everything, and I didn't feel like you treated me any differently or you looked at me any differently. No, you'd get, be mad too anyway, wouldn't you? I don't know. In my, in my brain, that's like one of the reasons why I never wanted to tell everyone because I was so worried that people were gonna treat me differently or look at me differently. So in my brain, that was just the go-to reaction. Mm. So when you were like supportive and caring and like I don't know you didn't judge me or anything for for it obviously. yeah but you don't have a choice in it do you no I don't there you go mm. plus I mean you're a hoot yeah so that was pretty much like the start of our relationship when you first came to the hospital when I was on IVs like I remember you were <laughs> You like got there at 8 a.m. Yeah. Like it's an hour to get there. Like you drove an hour and you bought me like a load of bag of goodies and stuff. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, this is really weird. Yeah, and then you sort of watched the whole process with the physio coming in and the doctors would come in and. Mm. Well, um, she taught me through um, percussion properly, didn't she? Yeah, 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 she taught you how to do it properly. So, how did you feel when you saw me with like the long line in and. Probably a little bit of kind of oh okay, and then great, a lot of, then, a bit, then a bit of do you want a cup of tea? More than Paul. You want Paul? No. Does anything put you off in our relationship? <laughs> Your attitudes. Do you want to say anything? Yeah. About our relationship? Yeah. What? It's alright, isn't it? It's alright, isn't it? Do you remember at your brother's wedding? I don't think <laughs> like he'll his, remember it though. Like his brother came up to us. Oh, he was talking to us. He just goes, you two are weird. And we both looked at each other and went, <laughs> and then we walked off in opposite directions. <laughs> Tom. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Do you have any advice for um, partners that are maybe going out with someone with a CF? Be caring and supportive. But they're the two things that a boyfriend should be anyway, yeah, regardless. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're caring and supportive, then you accept any situation and you kind of get through it together and mm. that's your best. And you know, don't be afraid to ask questions because you'll learn a lot more from them than you will on your own. And yeah, or it, like from reading it on the internet. Yeah, this is my answer. Um, so <laughs> you'll learn a lot more from them than you will by reading it on the internet. And mm. so yeah. Because I think as well, like if you read a lot of stuff on the internet, which there is a lot of stuff, it's all very general CF. Yeah, it is. Whereas us CFers are completely different. I still different. haven't looked it up on the internet since. I could, can you let me finish, please? It's my answer now. Barely got a word in. Yeah, because all of us CFers are completely, like, uniquely different. 
Mm. So reading about it on the internet, it might not apply to the person that you're going out with. And that would probably be my advice to a, a CFO who is going out with someone is just to try your best to be like really honest and open uh, with the person you're dating, with your partner. Because um, that's, that's the, the way you're both going to learn, isn't it? Mm. Um, I'm All just trying to, no filler. I'm trying boom, to... Boom, what album is that? Some 41. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got it. Um, mm. <laughs> Giza. Mm. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Robot, 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 what? Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And it was interesting. I'm sorry I talked too much. Do you think people want to hear about our relationship? I don't know now. Thank you, Tom, for being in this video. Anytime. It's great, yeah. Really, really good, enjoyable. Do we do that? Ugh. That's the that's the that's the thing. The thumbnail. The thumbnail. Don't put that in. They're so cringeworthy.